whose tactic is correct? Allison's attempt at a peaceful handover or Otto's kill first, ask questions later? Should Rainey's have roasted the greens when she had the chance? And how much leg would Otto have to show to get Laris' favor over Allison's favor? All those questions and more will be answered on this episode of The, the Joffrey of Podcast. Podcast. Very busy. Many important matters require King's attention. I'm King now. King, 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 King now. I am King. I am King. I am Kiss it. I am Kiss it again. I am Your fingers or your King doesn't your fingers discuss your battle plan. I am one, but girls. Your fingers or your tongue. I am the King. I'm telling Mother. Oh. My name's Bubba, and with me as always is... Catfish. Catfish. We just saw the penultimate episode of House of the Dragon. If you watched it all eight seasons of Game of Thrones, you know that the penultimate episode is where stuff goes down. What is your rating out of 10 for episode 9, The Green Council? You mean The Search for Aegon? I thought that was what the <laughs> name of this title was. Bubba, I am yeah. going to give this 7 out of 10 what I like to call double T's. Double T's? Yeah. Double T's is where you spend your entire life with somebody. You share almost all their genes. They're your bro ham, but when it comes to a fight, they bail on you. That stands for terrible twins. Whoa, Eric, seven out of ten is pretty Eric low. Or Eric. Actually, you know, Bubba, I'm going to predict something here without having seen anything. Oh, I'm wow. going to predict that a lot of listeners are even lower than that. And I will tell you why, because just the way you mentioned, why? this is the penultimate episode. And usually for Game of Thrones, the penultimate episode was the episode where everything went down. The full action, the big set pieces. That didn't happen here. I hung out tonight to watch the uh, next time on the season finale. And it looks like they've shifted that to 10. So I think everyone's expectations for what was going to happen here were super high and they're going to be even more down than me. I dug most of it. I'm still a little confused. Allison really has not gone what I like to call full green yet. <laughs> uh, I would have thought she learned her lesson. We did learn some new things and that is that uh, Laris is no longer just satisfied with doing his job and moving up in power. He wants a little something in exchange for it. You know, that's fine. I mean, we know George R. R. Martin was a Giants fan. And so uh, just like uh, one of his old coaches, uh, Laris uh, likes a little bit of foot action. Uh, it was Are you implying double R? Double R. Rex Ryan. Yes, absolutely. Rex Ryan. This was Rex Ryan gave this episode 11 out of 10. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Gracious. Uh, there was a lot of uh, moving parts. They did start, oh, yeah. spend a, a much of the episode looking for Aegon. I don't know why if I was Amon, if I would not have just taken care of him when I got him. I also felt like they weren't exactly clear about why... Otto and Allison both sent separate groups of people out and said, bring them directly to me. So later I'm going to ask you, Bubba, whether you thought Otto's intention for finding Aegon was different than Allison's intention. But otherwise, I thought it was enjoyable. It wasn't a, a typical episode nine of a Game of Thrones show, but I think they're saving that for next episode. And then if people are disappointed with it it was due to the expectations that this is where the fireworks would happen mm. what about you bubba catfish we do not talk about the episode before we start recording we want we to keep not. our opinions completely completely separate so that you don't influence me i don't influence you we can Correct. give our honest takes and listeners we always say who cares what we think we want to know what you think and we do that because we know we're just too silly fools and that what we say really doesn't matter compared to your opinion and your opinion does matter and so i do all that preamble because catfish i am going seven double h's out of ten double h's well double h's is a shout out to my boy larry's when you get heel horny when you see a heel and you get horny and uh, th that was the moment 
that felt the most alive. That was the moment that felt the most, wait, what is happening now? This is how Allison pays Larry's back. And so it was show shocking and weird. It was like, whoa, okay, right. Uh, Laris has a nickname of the club foot, very cruel nickname. And so of course, seeing other people's feet gets his rocks off. I, like you expected the fireworks factory. This wasn't the fireworks factory. I know in our small council debate later, we're going to go over Allison's kind of let's have a peaceful transition of power attempt and Otto's kill first, kill second, kill third, kill all. Right. And then there'll, there'll be no more questions, really. <laughs> but if there was going to be that battle, it needed to be more of a battle. And like you, in the end, I'm not exactly sure what was so important about Otto getting Aegon versus Allison getting Aegon. And I maybe that's stupid of us. Maybe we should realize, oh, the person who has the future king holds all the cards. But they're on the same side. It, it, it There wasn't enough true division. Even Rainey's, who, who, you know, exits the episode in a grand exit, there are a lot of half measures going on if you're a friend breaking bad. And this episode felt like half measures. Mm. We're ready for the fireworks factory. We would understand the fireworks factory. But it, it's also pulling punches. Here, I'm doing all these doubles. Firework factory, breaking bad, pulling punches. But it just didn't connect with me like a lot of episodes do. So I feel tough giving it 7 out of 10. But listeners, I'm just giving my honest take. Once again, who cares what we think? We want to know what you think. And reach out to us on all these platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, go down in the comments and let us what you let us know what you think. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, at Double PHQ, on facebook.com slash double PHQ. Email us, heck, email us with a long tirade of how we can only give this episode 7 out of 10. It's hello. Or that's why right. could we give it such a high rating of 7 out of 10? Exactly right. So once again, that's hello at doublepmedia.com. We want to hear from you. Mm. Maybe people can let us know this, Bubba, because this is what I wondered if I'd missed. Okay. That if Otto knew that Amon would be better than Aegon, and he wants to get rid of Aegon. And Alicent, of course, doesn't, but that wasn't made clear enough. We did spend far too much time searching for Aegon in this episode. <laughs> well, let's let's go right there. Okay. Do you think Amon, the younger brother, would make a better king. He kind of put his uh, resume, you know, he put his LinkedIn page out there for people to see. Who would be the better king between King Viserys's two sons, Aegon or Aemon? It, it, it almost, that almost feels like a rhetorical question. I guess if you want someone else to be in charge, clearly Aegon doesn't care about it. So... You're just going to have to, tr if you're asking me if I think he would make a better king, then it would be, do I think that whoever talks to him latest, Otto or Allison, would make a better <laughs> king? Ooh, uh, good point, good point. Amond will, will make a better king. Will he be a more violent, vicious king? Yes, but only to the people who mess with him. I feel like he'll be de a decent leader for his people. He won't be good for uh, anybody else who has a dragon or <laughs> anybody else who we really care about in this show. Mm -hmm. But I think he would be a better king. I want to say this because I have been team green, team You're, green, team greens. I don't, don't uh, say so have been. Long, uh -huh. So long. I've been the hand to team greens. And even though I've been on team greens, yeah. I have been anti Aegon beyond a doubt. But there was so much of this episode where I actually respected him for realizing he shouldn't be king. As terrible as Aegon is, the fact that he's smart enough to realize the person I am should not be king, that was like the first time I've ever thought this kid actually has some smarts. And so I think you're right. He can easily be manipulated. He was manipulated by his mother, by the pageantry of the crown, where suddenly he's like, okay, wait a minute, people are going to clap? People are going to clap my name. Hey, okay, maybe being king isn't so bad. So that was the, that was the little 
yeah, <laughs> the little inch that I'll give to Aegon possibly being an okay king if he can now, even survive what's going to be coming for him next week. Holy smokes. Now, what is sort of a a better representation of his kingliness that we <laughs> saw in this episode? The fact that he loves child fights or that he's okay with bastard children of his being imprisoned to watch and or later on participate in child fights. Ned Stark got attacked so much for uh -huh. not getting his kids ready for that brutal world. Mm. Aegon is getting that child ready very early. <laughs> he's like, kid, look at what happens to kids in this brutal world. You got to sharpen your teeth. And to be honest, Catfish, I was watching mm -hmm. that scene, that, that brutal scene of these children fighting, I assume, in Flea Bottom. And all I could think was, all right, Jim, I got a kid here. He, she shaved his <laughs> teeth, have been shaved down the points, and he's biting this kid. I think he's going to have a great round. Let's see you have some action. You like that? I did. I, You know, it just made me think how many people in this show, they're showing the scars of childhood, yep. right? I mean, Laris, because of his foot, now has a foot fixation. Mm -hmm. The most exciting moment of Aegon's life was watching the aftermath of the fight between his brother <laughs> and the strong kids, and he just wants to recreate that every day. Childhood trauma. Bubba, this is a show about childhood drama. It sure is. And we even kind of got that said explicitly, in the scene between Otto and Allison, where, you know, she was pretty much just calling him out. No, I didn't really have a say. I was just following your wishes. And so there's so much to talk about. Once again, we've gone seven out of 10, but this podcast could go long. But the most important thing is your feedback. Once again, on Twitter, Instagram, at double PHQ, Facebook.com slash double PHQ, YouTube, leave the comments below, email us hello at double P media.com. We want to hear your thoughts because I have a feeling you're right, Kevish. Some people may be lower than us in their rating. Some people may have loved this episode. We want to hear from everybody. And your opinion is gosh darn correct. Love it. Love it, Bubba. We do some double P. Double P. Podcast promotion and say, if you haven't gotten onto Disney Plus and start watching Andor, on Disney Plus, you're missing a really fun show that we've given really high ratings to recently. Oh, and we're covering yeah. on our Parsec Passion sure. podcast, which you can find by going to all your favorite apps and searching Parsec Passion. Or if you're into YouTube, you can just go to our YouTube channel and you'll hear us talking about Star Wars, Cassian and Ender, in that fun espionage thriller rebellion forming show. Also, We've been pitching this for a couple of weeks, but we want you guys part of the team. We are going to be talking and solving a murder mystery starting yes. right now. That's right. We're going to be watching Magpie Murders. It's available here in the States on PBS all around the world. It's available on BritBox. Go and check that show out and see if you can solve this murder mystery with Detective Catfish as he dives into the clues. And we have recorded our first podcast about the first episode. And I will just say... Detective Catfish has impressively solved certain things that are obvious. And so get ready. <laughs> yes. It's going to be very, very fun. And we want you on this journey with us. So once again, that's going to be called Let's Solve Magpie Murders. You're going to find it on YouTube and our Double P podcast feed. So once again, wherever you get your podcast at, just search Double P podcast and you'll be able to join us on this murder mystery trip. Bubba, I'm just so excited that okay. in addition to having a regular job that pays me well, I appear to have a podcasting job that pays me not at all. So I this so is great. Good. Please join us, folks, for our podcast. Uh, I'm going to call them Double P. Double P? Yeah, podcast aplenty. <laughs> the, the uh is silent. <laughs> it is, it is. All right, Catfish. Well, we keep talking about our listeners and how we love our loyal listeners and how we want their feedback. So you know what time it is. Let oh. me get the bell out. I love it. It is match game time, Bubba. It was another Catfish takeover tonight. Oh, love and it. I'm so barely proud of myself for some of these. But all that matters is that it's it's there's enough information for our viewers to show how amazing they are and how also we have found our audience, Bubba. They're just as inappropriate as we are, and we love it. All right, match game one. After his death, 
the king was referred to as Viserys the Peaceful. After Lord Beesbury's death, he will be referred to as Beesbury the blank. After his death, King Viserys was known as Viserys the Peaceful. After Lord Beesbury's death, he will be referred to as Beesbury the blank. Pudding faced. The <laughs> For what his face got pushed to and what his face looks like now. <laughs> okay, that sold me. That sold me on it. I wasn't sure at first. I thought it was just mean, mean to this dead Lord Beesbury. But uh, I think you really brought it around to that being his true title. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bubba. Yeah. This is for you now. After Lord Beesbury's death, he will be referred to as Beesbury the... Bald. And that's not B-A-L-D, it's B-A-L-L-E-D. Bald. Right, Beesbury the Bald. Okay, no comment, I get I, it. I, I, this is, I think this is one where the, uh, you know, and the audience would go, oh, and G. Rayburn would look and just be like, uh, why do we, we have to waste time seeing if we're going to get matches? <laughs> Gene Rayburn would respect my... Fun. No, no, no. Do you remember uh, he was ready to have fun when somebody totally biffed it? All right. Let's All right. see if either one of us get any get any any matches. All right. Here, I'll go. After Lord Beesbury's death, he will be referred to as Beesbury the Face Planted. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's from our good buddy Tor Corey Bramblett at TCBPOV on Twitter. Pretty good. All right. Why don't you read the next one? All right. After Lord Beesbury's death, he referred to as Beesbury the Tabled Discussion. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Who do you gave us that one? I that is likely cap. Seth at likely Seth. Oh, so good. Okay. After Lord Beesbury's death, he will be referred to as Beesbury the Double C. Double C. Kristen crushed. Oh, no. poor, poor Beesbury. That's at Jeff Pirro on Twitter. And Jeff on Twitter is at J-E-P-H-P-E-R-R-O. So good. Very, very good so far. Everybody's better than us, but no matches. After Lord Beesbury's death, he will be referred to as Beesbury the corner pocket, as in eight ball in the... <laughs> Oh, that is pretty close for you. Oh, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. But I also, <laughs> please be, no, I'll just go. That's from our good buddy, Matt Murdick at Musical Concepts on Twitter. Like it, like it, like it. All right. What else you got? All right. We got, uh, here we go. After his death, Lord Beesbury will refer to as Beesbury the Brained. Oh. Yeah. These are sad. These are making me feel sad. Oh, you should feel sad at all. That's all right, and Nicholas Fortuna on Twitter. Okay. All right, let me, I'll read the last one. Here we go. This is so good. After Lawrence Beesbury's death, he will be referred to as Beesbury Double B. Double B? Yeah, Beesbury Be Buried. <laughs> <laughs> So wait a minute, Lord Beesbury the Be Buried. <laughs> Beesbury Be Buried, yeah. That okay. is so good. That is at mandatory. That is Tory Hunter. So good. Hold on, we got one last one in, just under oh, the wire. Sorry, I literally just got All right. Lord Beesbury, after his death, will be referred to as Beesbury the Double F. Double F. Floppy faced. Oh. <laughs> Not nice. <laughs> I disagree that that wasn't nice. I thought that was delicious. <laughs> That's from at Dooley's Left Legs on Twitter. And Dooley, this, what time is it in, in England where Dooley lives? This is incredible. Can you believe this He's loyal listener? He's taking care of business. He's taking care of business for us. All right, hold on. I'm going to find out. We are recording this right now. Oh, my yeah. God. It is 4 a.m. as we speak in London. That's incredible. Hey, I want to talk to listeners. I see the download stats. I see the YouTube stats. There are a good thousand, if not more, of you who never have responded to any of these match games. And maybe you think they're stupid and silly. They are stupid and silly. Maybe you think, oh, I can't be clever. Catfish and I prove every week you don't have to be clever. <laughs> that we is do, true. 
we do want to hear your answers. We do want we always bother you. We interrupt these podcasts so much to say, reach out to us at double BHQ, give us YouTube comments and stuff. But really, maybe, you know, you're not on Twitter, maybe you're not, whatever it is, send us something, you know, just send us something that says I'm engaged, whether it's YouTube comment or I'm listening would be great. A lot of times we do these podcasts into the ether and we see numbers that people are downloading, but we really, unless you respond, it, maybe give us a Apple podcast or a Spotify review. We, we don't really know. We want to thank you. And we're going to give away prizes next week. So, hey, you know, Heck just yeah. say anything so you can be eligible to win. And we do appreciate you spending your time with two buffoons. <laughs> well, Catfish, you were only seven out of ten. But mm-hmm. this is the time in the podcast where we go through our double S strongest scene in the episode. Mm-hmm. I don't want to give it to Laris's foot fetish, which was, though, the moment where I kind of did sit up. You know, a lot of times in these penultimate no, episodes did. of Game of Thrones, something happens and I sit up. This was that was the one moment where I was like, wait, what now? Oh, my Lord. Did you have a nominee for the strongest scene in the episode? Well, I loved the end when the queen that never was brought in the dragon and mm-hmm. it was like. Is it going to be fire time? And she decides no. But I think part of the problem with this episode is that my strongest scene is essentially the first scene at the King's Council, where they are trying to figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to do it and who is with them. And some people decide uh, to make their views known uh, (laughs) at the table, and that doesn't go well for them. It honestly doesn't make... Yeah, uh, at any time, announcing your views uh, in opposition does not go well, as we find out later. Uh, however, that to me was the most interesting scene. What, so what, was, it your, happened at the what was your favorite part of that scene? I'm going to go ahead and name mine just because it's so ridiculous. Go ahead, let's so, hear it. So you had Kristen Cole, way too strong a sit down, <laughs> way too strong a sit down. And then you have the, uh, sorry, I'm going to mess up his name, so let me refer to my notes here. You have um, Lord Westerling of the Kingsguard. He's like, Kristen Cole, you take off your cloak. You are a, a scumbag. I'm taking you down. And and all this is happening there around Tylen Lannister, who's sitting at the end of the table. And he's like, oh, let me get away from my seat. And then when seemingly everything calms down, Tylen sneaking back to his seat at the small council. I thought that was great. It's like, okay, I guess I could sit back down here between these people swinging swords. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite moment in it. It was very (coughs) eye-opening for Allison to learn, wait a minute, Dad, you guys have been planning this for a while. That is is very, that is like a a punch to the face. Like, wait a minute. I just decided because I had this, you know, my husband in his dying breath said this thing about Aegon being king, but you guys have been doing this for a while. I think she should have been angrier. I'm surprised she wasn't more forceful. You know, she is a little bit forced, more forceful than with Otto later on, one-on-one. I'm going to cut her some slack that maybe she was a little bit more surprised and didn't kind of know how to react, uh, simply because, you know, one of the issues that we've had with the show was not seeing how people really feel. And even with Allison, we haven't seen how she's really felt. And we had made some assumptions about kind of where she was in her mental process as far as how far she was willing to go. We had to make assumptions. And so it was surprising to see those assumptions challenged tonight. Don't really feel like that's completely our fault. She still kind of years and years on seems to be sort of in a wishy-washy place here. Oh, yeah, I agree. Once again, where I thought maybe she should have blown up more or I expected more of a explosion once she found out about this. I also thought what could have been a very powerful scene of Allison confronting her father, Otto, also kind of petered out for a bit. It it ends with Otto saying, oh, sometimes you remind me so much of your mother. And then she's, you know, like, Dad, you're pointless. And she leaves. And so there wasn't like a good capper to that scene either. So I think I'm going to go for my scene, the strongest one, Mm -hmm. I suppose, is the Allison and Rainey scene. She goes in and she asks her for her support. And she makes what I think are some of the right pitches. It may be too late, but she does say this thing. 
What it may be he... a little too forceful as well. It's okay. hard when you're making a pitch and squeezing someone's hand so hard that their circulation stops. <laughs> but she does make a good pitch. What has being with Team Renera really gotten you? That is, that is the right pitch. I think it's too late, but it is the 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 right pitch. I think it's, if you were going to get Rainey's to your side, I think those are the words. Now, Rainey's says, you know, my house is not fickle. She's pretty hardcore that she couldn't be convinced now. But if Allison had maybe been playing more like Otto, I think there's a chance she could have gotten Rainey's. And so right now, that is my strongest scene. All right. That Yeah, that that is an interesting, interesting scene. And she does, yeah, she say you're wiser than I believed you to be. Not like that helps in any way, shape, or form. No, not at this point. We don't know. I, you know, it. It still doesn't seem like. And maybe we should have just had made some assumptions. Maybe we're just being too spoon fed here. But if you look at things very carefully, I mean, Allison does not really have her own power base. No, she has uh, Kristen Cole. I mean, he's pretty she dedicated has to her. Cole. She has she, Laris. She, but she has Laris. But strangely enough, you know, they're making it clear to us that we don't know if she can even trust Laris because oh. in a scene before that, he says to Otto, like, mm-hmm. "What do you? What you know? Essentially, what do you want? What do you want the queen to feel? I can help you with that." I mean, I would think the main thing that Laris makes the queen feel is creeped out. But, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and Laris tells her there's this whole group of spies that's in place. Right. I'm not sure why he's doing that. Yeah. And then Laris, I think he's like, what do you want me to do, queen? She shows enough foot that that he gets his rocks off. And then I assume that he burns down mysterious place, right? That's that's his work is is her. Her establishment burns up in smoke, is what I thought. Or was that Otto burning up the child fighting ring to pay back Masseria? What did who did you think burned? What place burned down there? Well, you know what I I didn't I didn't know whether it just burned down due to the people rioting and running. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought because the cloak figure walked away. I have to I have to say that because of its placement in the episode, I did think that was Laris paying back. Allison on what do you want me to do? He said, what did he say? Something like you chop off the head. That's the quickest way. Or we'll have to go back and watch listeners. We're recording this right after the episode drops. So I'm sure people know the correct answer by now. There's also the chance that Otto paid back Masseria and burned down those places where the kids have to fight. I got Masseria. She comes back. We didn't know what the heck she was doing back here. Turns out she's got more power than we know. She does have more power than more power to you, Mysteria. Way to go. And speaking of Mysteria, are yeah. you ready for match game two? I am ready for match game two. You know, Mysteria's secret name, you know, her uh, handle, yeah. as it will, on the King's Landing social media apps is The White Worm. Oh. But Laris's secret name should be blank. Mysteria's secret name is the White Worm. Laris's secret name should be Double P. <laughs> Double P? Yeah, Pud Fingerer. <laughs> All right, Bubba. Wait, you thought it. Gene Rayburn was going to hate my answer? <laughs> yeah. Gene Rayburn would retire if he heard that answer. He'd be like, okay. <laughs> This game's over. I give up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now it's your oh, chance. Now, now, hold on. Remember, this yeah. is the white worm. And I so I think you do have right. to have color to truly match it up. So let uh, me hear Okay. It. All right, great. Uh, Mysterious secret name is the white worm. Laris's secret name should be... Buster Brown. Oh. <laughs> For everybody younger than us... Buster Brown is an old shoe company that uh, he sold shoes, and so uh, that was my that was my guess. I'm positive no one is old enough to remember Buster Brown shoes, but I thought White Worm, Buster Brown, it was my call. I was very proud of my gift game tonight, by the way, with the questions. Oh yeah, all they're, right, they're very good. All right, here we go. I want to read this first one. It's so good. Mysterious secret name is the White Worm. Laris's secret name should be. Double L. 
Double L? Get Lord Little Toe. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, is no. Tory Hunter at Mandatory. Okay, if you're going to do that one, then you ready? Yep. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this is the first time we've had one which actually you had to sh uh, click and say, yes, I'm older, I'm an adult to see the answer. So you ready for Likely Seths? I'm All ready. Right. Mysterious secret name is the White Worm. Laris's secret name should be... Sigh, Lord help me. Triple F. Triple F. The Forlorn Foot Effer. <laughs> That's at Likely Seth on Twitter. Likely Seth, I had to uh, actually click and say I was an adult to see your answer. So good work. All right, excellent. Hold on to the bell because I'm going to read this next one. Okay, here we go. Laris's secret name should be Triple F. Triple F? Yeah, falsifying foot fornicator. That's pretty close. Who was that? That, that, that is a match. His left legs. Oh, man. There you go. If you stay up to 4 a.m., you should match. Heck, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Here we go. Here All we right. Go. Laris's secret name should be top tier only fan subscriber. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get an OnlyFans account just so I can see. See how Laris would do on that site. That's Double M Matt Murdick going dirty like that. All right. Uh, Laris's secret name should be President of the Foot Club. Oh, so that's, another, that's another match. Anybody who goes flat, that uh, that's Endless Mike 03 on Twitter. Heck yeah. Oh my God. And Holly Hun Pants uh -oh, says here we go. Laris's secret name should be Fan of Feet. And then likely Seth replied to her to her yeah. and said, is this like his only feed account? So it's uh, sort of uh, matching well, along. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Well, boy, we got so many feet. I want to get to, I want to get to all of them. Larry's the secret name should be double F foot freak, as well as feet rose. <laughs> <laughs> and those are from Corey Bramble and our good buddy, Jack Klompas, who's at BT Mac 11 on Twitter. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna say my favorite one. All right, oh, hold, it's, on, hold, it's on, hold so on, hold on, hold on. Okay, all right. Wanna, okay. We gotta save that for the very end. So read all Nick right. Fortuna's, and then we'll get to that one. All right, Nick Fortuna's is uh, uh, quadruple F. Qu quadruple F. Yeah, foot fantasizing phallus flicker. <laughs> that one matches with mine it because does. I, I said pud fingerer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay, now here's the answer that's really going to break Twitter. All right, you're ready. <laughs> Read it, Catfish. <laughs> oh, both Bubba and I were just like, we're so amazed. It's going to be the answer of the night. Mysterious secret name is the White Worm. Laris' secret name should be Louis C.K. I'm still dying over it. We saw this like an hour ago. It feels like, but uh, Louis C.K. Who gave us that? That is that was Satan Claus at Klaus Sons. I mean, come on. Come we are gonna we're, we're gonna give away as we always say. We're gonna give away uh, prizes next week to all of you who are kind enough to respond to us in any way for all this stuff. It let me say that. <laughs> There, we're you know you don't necessarily win a prize, but next week we may have to pull out our match game Hall of Fame answers because that is one, that is one, that is one for the books. That I love it. Very, I very, love it. Very very wrong and very very good. But because we are doing this on the fly, I do have to read. One answer we just got in for this week's episode. So you're okay, ready? yeah, let's hear it. This is rough. Okay, mysterious secret name is the White Worm. Laris's secret name should be Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> That's from your old buddy Bucho, who's at Fist oh, of Bucho on I Twitter. Now I always say yeah. that <laughs> Bucho is in New Zealand, so we were talking about what time is it in London for our good buddy Dooley's left leg. What time do you think it is in New Zealand right now, Catfish? Oh my god, I'm gonna guess it's 9 a.m.? No, it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. 
Perfect. I got that completely right. <laughs> it's now time to do our character rundown catfish. Let's do and it. And I want to talk about a character who is only a bit in the episode, but people love talking about her so much. And that is King Aegon's sister, a.k.a. his wife. It's Helena. In this episode, we see her mother, Allison, going in to visit her. Helena's there, and her two kids are there. Maybe this got lost on a lot of viewers, but Aegon and Helena have already had two kids. They're sitting there on the floor of her bedroom when her mother walks in. And Helena has got these kind of sayings, her proclamations, her her visions, maybe her dragon dreams, whatever they are. And she said it again this week. She said, there is a beast beneath the boards. What is she referring to? Or is it just Helena's a little off? Any idea? I mean, I assume like any oracle, she says uh, things that are generalizable enough that later on you can say, oh, this is what she was talking about. I mean, even tonight, the beast beneath the boards could have been, uh, uh, you know, Rhaenerys's dragon. Who knows? Oh, yeah. No, it was beneath the board. That's right. There is a thing from the book that I think it might be uh, kind of hinting at for everybody. And all I can say is uh, cheese might be the hint of what it's coming from the books. But listeners, I don't know. What do you think? I think there can possibly be spoilers in this. So be very careful. But if you want to once again we love spoilers via our email account that's hello at double p media.com hello at double p media.com and because i've read the book i think i can look at them and still be safe but if you have any ideas let us know if you haven't read the books and don't have any idea and have a guess like maybe it's rainy's coming up with that dragon once again contact us on twitter go in youtube go down in the comments and let us know so catfish I think that's a good guess. It certainly could have been Rainey's coming up from down below with her giant dragon. Holy smokes. Any other thoughts about her? You know, we, we have all the greens. I almost want to go through all the greens because that's who's in the episode. Any other thoughts about her and about how she made that great toast last week and or what her situation is? I mean, she is, I will say this. She seems more, you know, in these kind of shows where it's sort of like, you have these kind of like magical soothsayers or whatever mm -hmm. like that. And it's so, so because they're connected to sort of, kind of a more spirit world or more extrasensory things, they're not so much in this world. And I felt like they've grounded her a little bit more in this world than she was earlier. Oh, yeah. In other words, I feel like she's not as out there as she could be and as she was shown when she was younger. Right. You know, let's go crazy. Let's go crazy with her. She's <laughs> like, uh, you know, this is a world of magic and, you know, people just like on the last kingdom, you know, when you have the scalds and stuff like that, those people are, those people are cuckoo because they're oh, in touch with sure. the other world. Well, well, let's go to somebody who seems very touched, uh, very not uh, of the other world, but very much of this world and the squalor of this world. Mysteria, when she was kind of more heavily in these episodes earlier, you were very tough on the actress's accent and her work. In this episode, we get a bit further at what she wants, and she kind of wants a good cause. She's like, hey, I will give you Prince Aegon. I'll do everything, but you got to do something about what's happening down here. We got child fights going on, kids being mutilated so they can do better in these fights. Your hand of the king. You've done nothing about this. Do something about it. What do you think of the white worm? What did you think of her place in this story? I know that King's Landing, it's like one of those big cities, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's like New York. It's right. like London. It's, it's an international city. People come from all over. So you're used to dealing with all kinds of people. Still then, I could, I could have just one second of auto going, where are you from? <laughs> I've I can't never place heard this here. kind of accent before. <laughs> I can't place where you're from. Where is that again? <laughs> uh, did, did it make you like her that she is trying to get some reforms in her city? Or are you still like, get me back to the palace intrigue that I signed up for, not this uh, social work? Well, I just don't. 
I, I mean, it feels like I thought she was going to be a far more important part of the story and then the first few episodes, and then at least she completely dropped off and she came back. So at this point, it feels like she's just becoming more of a useful plot point rather than really a character that we are supposed to follow or care for. Let's get back to Team Green's. Kristen Cole, he's seemingly had a relatively big part earlier, and it feels like maybe he's just been reduced to Allison's muscle. And there was a very nice moment, I thought nice moment, where Allison was like, if you have any, as much as you care for me, I need you to do this. Do, do you think Kristen Cole, has he transferred all that almost romantic love he had towards Rhaenyra to Alicent. I doubt anything has happened physically, but he was outside the brothel. Like, listen, women are like the mother. You've got to talk about them, you know, in, in exalted terms. So how do you feel so far about Kristen Cole, this conflicted man who doesn't have any problem squashing somebody's head, doesn't have any trouble drawing a sword on his boss, the Westerling commander of the Kingsguard, and at the same time, has these highfalutin ideals. Any thoughts on how Kristen Cole has developed? Well, I, I mean, this is a, just a prime example of completely failing up, right? Oh, yeah. By the end of this episode, he's the head of the Kingsguard, the head. Even though he's twice killed people completely inappropriately and seemingly out of all whack with any kind of ideologies that he claimed to espouse about fair play and mm -hmm. rules, etc. He's Does got what I like to call double I. Double I? Yeah, irritability issues. <laughs> Does that make him, make him a more compelling character or make him less compelling? What do you think? Compelling? I mean, he's... I feel like with every episode he does stuff, he becomes more and more hateable. So I guess that means more compelling, right? More of a hero, Team Green. Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, how about Amond, the brother who, you know, as a kid, he seemed okay if bullied. And then when he got control of that dragon, he was very boastful and got in a fight and lost an eye. Then it almost felt like last episode he was you know, not right in the head. Like he was just a violent, you know, don't get on this guy's bad side. This episode, it feel, felt like he did reveal a different side to him. He's like, hey, I'm the one studying our history. I'm the one learning how to fight. And would he kill his mess of a brother for the crown? What, do, what are your thoughts on Amon? Well, my, my thoughts are, first, I want to interrogate your feelings about him last episode. What what about last episode did you make him think that he was violent? All he did was kept using the word strong and using <laughs> he was using words as a dagger, which I thought was quite clever of him. Well, we did see him fighting with Kristen Cole, sparring, I should say, with Kristen Cole. Kristen Cole's like, hey, you're going to be really great at the tournaments. And he's like, I, have, I don't give a rat's ass about tournaments. Uh, well, then why are you fighting so hard, dude? Well, I think he's f fighting because just like what he said this episode, that he's the one who's been essentially training to be the king and to lead men. So I uh, look, last episode, I liked him a lot more than the younger one. Mm -hmm. This episode, I like him even more. And honestly, if he had killed his brother, I would have had no problem with that. <laughs> that would not have made me like him any less. Would it have made you like him more? Yes. All righty. Heck yeah. Let's go. Amen. Come into town. I mean, it's uh, not like they're twins, like <laughs> Eric and Arik, whichever one, whichever one is the, whichever one of them is the dick that left the other one. <laughs> well, one of them, was it Eric or Arik? who helped Rainey's escape. It's, it's impossible to tell. One of them should have said, I'm, you know, I'm Auric with an A. And they should have on their suits of armor either right. a big E or a big A. Exactly, exactly right. Last character let's talk about is Otto. Otto is another character where I don't feel like I have a hand on him. Let's talk about his okay. strong move. He's bringing a bunch of lords there in the castle. I guess the lords who are already in the castle. And he's like, okay, it's time to bend the knee. 
And there was the uh, one woman who was from a house. What house was she a part of? She was like, you know, I'm a part of this house and I'm not bending the knee. And he was like, okay, dungeons for you. Dun- I assume dungeons, you know, we didn't see these people again. And then, oh, she was from house fell. And then there was the one guy who you could tell, he's like, I'm just bending the knee so I don't get put in a dungeon and or killed. He tries to escape. At the end of the episode, we see this dude hung. He's hanging there in the courtyard. Yeah, just chilling. Right, hanging out. So any thoughts on Otto who, you know, Otto has gone stone cold, Otto. Holy smokes. Any thoughts on him? Well, I I mean, let's be clear. Otto's made this clear ever since he was banished as Hand of the King of the first time, is that it's either us or them. And if you think it's either us or them, it's always smart to take care of them before they come for us. <laughs> Listeners, what are your thoughts about Otto, Kristen Cole, Helena, Aegon, Amond, all the Greens, Masaria? Write to us and let us know. Once again, if you just want to respond to, I like Amond, whatever it is, I hate Amond, let us know. We just want to, once again, engage with you and know that you're not just a random number. Catfish, are you ready for match game three? I'm ready for it. Okay, so here we go. Aegon, his first act as king will be to blank. Boom, 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 boom. That's right, everybody. Aegon's first act as king will be to legalize child fighting. Right. Yeah, Masseri is going to hate that ruling. I was going to be like, what can I do? I'm, I'm only the hand of the king. Well, woo. it'll be interesting. You think he'll keep his grandfather as his hand or say, like, Grandpa, I've had enough of you. <laughs> Ooh, you forced he... me to be king and I didn't want to. Well, w- w- if he's really scared, I bet Amon could get, could convince Aegon he's the right choice for it. Oh, I did. That is a great oh, call. That would be so good. All right. So All right. Aegon's first act as king will be to... Outlaw curtains. <laughs> He's a window man. What can you say? Every everything that must be done must be done in the open. All right, grab the bell, Bubba. Let's see if anybody. I have a feeling one of us. Oh, you think so? It's gonna get close, but no, I don't think it's it? gonna be me. All right, okay. here we go. Aegon's first act as king will be to ban dragons from all public speaking events. <laughs> smart, smart move. Smart move. That is Dooley's left legs. Thank yeah. you so oh, no. much. I saw this next one, so I'll read it. Do Aegon's it. first act as king will be to double W. Double W? Window wank. Oh, there you go. Ring the bell. All right, here we go. Aegon's Good. first act as king will be to Syrah New Bastard. Oh. <laughs> Celebrate, celebrate good times. Come on. That was mandatory at mandatory Tory Hunter. I think, hold on, Tory Hunter. I think that'll be his first act, his second act, his 15th act. Very good. Okay. Aegon's first act as king will be to start inviting children to freely tour the Red Keep for reasons. Oh. <laughs> oh that's very close. To the child fighting. That's from <laughs> at Musical Concepts, double M on Twitter. Very, very, very good. Oh, no. Okay, I've seen a couple of these answers. If you want to read one, I'll... Yeah, I'll yeah all right. Aegon's girl. first act as king will be to... Hide behind his mother. Oh, <laughs> that is sweet. Oh, that's from Skylar. At Ekadare, thank you so much. That is so good. Oh, that's sweet. Did you think it was sweet how Allison stepped in front of her son? Like that wouldn't have protected him from dragon fire, but I liked it. No, but she was the one who was like, well, but uh, for sure, Ray, Ray, if Rhaenerys had been kept staring at Aegon, she would have let it fly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think these two match. So you ready? Seth, likely Seth on Twitter wrote his first act will be piss his pants in fear. And then at Claw's Sons, that's Satan Claws on Twitter, he said Aegon's first act will be to 
change his underwear. That, these, yeah. are, these are very, very close. Yeah. Very close. I Love think that matches. it. All right, Aegon's first act as king will be to declare the age of emo. <laughs> that that is... cab for cutie comes out and uh, cheers him up. <laughs> Corey Bramlett at TCBPOV. He's, oh, I don't want to rule. No, no rule. No. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So this one, I think, is probably a smart first act. Aegon's first act will be to burn the king's bed sheets. <laughs> oh, those got a stink. That's uh, <laughs> Nicholas Fortuna on Twitter. Very good. All right. We got another one that I think sort of matches a previous one. Okay. Aegon's first act as king will be to dragon proof the sept. <laughs> Now, hold on. That was actually in the dragon pit, but very good. Who is that from? That's from Jeff Farrow. Oh, now tied to that, this isn't a match, but Jack Klompas said his first act will be to forget where he parked his dragon. <laughs> where did I park that thing? <laughs> that was excellent. Those are our answers. Listen, hey, if you're listening right now and oh, yeah. we didn't read your answer, that means we didn't get it before we did the podcast. But that's not shouldn't stop you from answering the question. No. Answer the question, and we will read it on the season finale of the Joffrey of Podcasts. Oh, so good, so good, so good. Okay, you know where you, we need to go. All rise. Enter the small council chamber as the small council debate as the small council debates the issues. The first issue on the docket is. Whose tactic is correct? Allison's attempt at a peaceful handover? Or Otto's kill first, ask questions later? Counselor Catfish. Lord of Reason. Yana, Who is correct? Yes. Yon, I know you won't like to hear this because you we're in a modern age here, Yana. And we, we believe in justice and we believe yes. in in a police system, in a mm. court of law, just like we are right here. But in this world, Your Honor, it's kill first, kill second, kill third. If there's any left, kill them. What? And then and then and then sow the seeds with their burned bodies. Sow the seeds uh, of, of the ground with their burned bodies, Your Honor. Terrible. Your Honor, let me jump in and say that that is incorrect. And let me say, Counselor Catfish is choosing Otto's method of how to handle this. Mm -hmm. So, That's right, Kristen yeah. Cole, please step up to <laughs> Counselor Catfish and tell him what you think of his plan. I think Allison does have the right attempt. This is a world with dragons. You just saw it. This episode could, re let me repeat, could have resulted in all of them getting dr roasted by dragon fire. Why didn't Rainey's? light the whole place on fire. She did it because Allison had reached out. Allison had made an attempt to get Rainey's on her side. And so at the very least, just doing that saved them all from being roasted by a dragon. And so if Otto had tried to kill Rainey's and failed, number one, if he had failed and she had reached her dragon, she would have torched all of them. Number two, if he killed her, who's to say her dragon isn't going to have some sort of connection with her and realize, oh, crap, my rider has been killed. I need to go burn down everybody. So I think that proves that Allison's way was the right way. There's a chance that even we haven't seen that final episode. There's a chance Rhaenyra might say, I didn't want it anyway. Fine. Otto tries to kill her. She'll never think that. Uh, yeah, Anna, he's completely convinced me that now that Allison has convinced uh, for a peaceful transition that all this will be cleared up without any further problems. <laughs> yeah. And that there'll be no more problems, Your Honor. Counselor Bubba, do you want to... Your Honor, please, please. You don't even have to finish that sentence. Yes. What I'm implying is that there's no more drama on the show and that HBO is fine with like, okay, episode 10, let's wrap this up and do a different Targaryen story next season. So that does sound ridiculous, but you always have to sue for peace first before you destroy the peace. 
Now, Yana, if you if your intention is to take over, you don't give your enemies any time to gather their forces. Kristen Cole, are you behind Catfish? You are? Give him the beesberry. <laughs> Wonderful work. Well, you're just staging a coup. Kristen Cole, why are you standing behind me? Uh, uh, get away. Counselor Bubba wins. Counselor Bubba wins. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Your <laughs> Honor. I'm glad that finally... You saw the right light. The yeah, light do, of the house. Did somebody tower. need me? I'm rusty. Is male have rusty? <laughs> you, you survived. Incredible. <laughs> Keep wearing that white cloak, male have rusty. Enough, enough silliness. Uh, Kristen, you can step back to where you were. Let's go to issue two. Should Rainies have roasted the greens when she had a chance? Counselor... Bubba, you were just arguing that she didn't because of Alicent, but should she have? So let's hear you first, Counselor Bubba. Your Honor, I normally go second, so I could kind of like go off of... Shut up and do it. Yes? Okay, Your Honor, fine. It's me, Bailiff Rusty. All right, listen, okay, I'll go. Everybody, just give me some space here. I personally think if she had roasted everybody, she would have really, really, really made herself enemy number one. Already, by having her dragon come up as it did in that packed dragon pit, who knows how many people she has already killed, right? If she then roasts her relatives, she's a kinslayer, correct? And so as, as bad as it sounds and how easy that would have been to just say, okay, enough of this, get rid of this uh, two-sided war, by killing all of them, then the realm would probably never forgive her probably that hatred would go towards Rhaenyra and she would poison the population against her side. So it, it is, it would have been made the episode maybe more exciting if she had roasted everybody, but roasting everybody would have been wrong for the greater good of her side. And so I think Rainey's made the right choice, not roasting the green. Okay. I'll never let you go first again. That was so poorly or argued. Counselor Catfish. Yana, I completely agree that all those people who are completely terrified and running out of the running out of there, they're completely fine now. Now that she didn't have the dragon or anything else, they're like, oh, you know what? We're not afraid of her anymore. Yana. Yes. Clearly, clearly, Yana. She should have those were the majority of her enemies right there, Yana. If she had roasted them all, she would have no more problems. Big deal. Kinslayer, who is the, who's going to come after her? Rhaenyra? Damon? I disagree, Your Honor. She could have gone back to Driftmark and lived out her days. But now she's going to be harried and hassled by these high tower and highfalutin greens. Very good argument, Counselor Catfish. Counselor Bubba, do you have a counter argument? Of course, Your Honor. I mean, of course, I've got it right. Where did I put it? Well, hold on, Your Honor. Counselor Catfish is talking about the small folk who were running from the chamber. Yes, she has terrified them. But the positive is that they are terrified or they're dead. And so sometimes it's easier to rule through fear or through... It's easier to rule dead people or people who are afraid than people who might not vote for you. So John, Rain I'm confused. Is 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 Cat is is Bubba now arguing you my don't case? You know your own name. That's he's, a good point. Bro. He's, he's calling him me, Catfish. I, he's I, Catfish. I feel like he's arguing my case right now, John. I'm very confused. Well, no, 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 no. I, the question is, Catfish, is if she yeah. should have roasted the greens. These poor small folk who became crushed folk or scared folk, they will live in fear. And so they'll probably do what she wants. Good work, Rady's not roasting the greens. Right. So <laughs> if I use the same philosophy, your honor against... Your honor, can I suggest you not roasted. use my philosophy? He's stealing my <laughs> philosophy. He just said it. Your honor, he took my philosophy. That is <laughs> my <laughs> philosophy. It's yes, if they're philosophy. dead or afraid, that's the way to do it. I've lost track of who's on what side. Sir Kristen, could you see the chat? Oh, no, 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 no. All right. That's two for Bubba. Very good, Sir Bubba. Let's go to the third issue on the docket. How much leg would Otto Hightower have to show to get Larry's 
favor over his daughter, Queen Alice. Councilor Catfish, let's hear your petition. Your Honor, I just yes. have to say that it feels like she's not really doing that much of a show. So <laughs> it feels like, you know, like Otto could maybe like take a bath in front of them where he kind of like kicks his leg up higher out of the tub. And I feel like that would bring Laris over to his side. Because I think partially what Laris is interested in is not just seeing a beautiful foot, but it's seeing a, a, a healthy foot, not like his. So to see like a man's foot where he can imagine, oh, that's my delicious foot mm. that's being soaked and, oh, and the toes are pointing right up to the sky, Your Honor. So I, I feel like just all the way up to the thigh, Your Honor, but soapy. Your Honor... I think it's not just how much a leg Otto would have to show. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that Laris was could really use the hand of the king, if you know oh. what I mean. <laughs> I, I I can see John. I just want him to stop. I can see. I get, I get that one. I give him. Got this it, little piggy went to market. <laughs> oh, this little piggy stayed home. But counselor, bye bye. I I will. Suffer any consequence from Kristen Cole to get you to not finish that. All right, Your Honor, I will. It's me, Bailiff Ray. I had nothing to do with this episode. <laughs> okay, listeners, you've heard these three questions, and certainly you can give better answers than our members of the small council, Bubba and Catfish, did. Reach out on social media and give us your thoughts at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. Email hello at doublepmedia.com. Court is adjourned. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Amazing. Catfish, we have talked too much and we have said, uh, we've talked a lot Agreed. and said very little. It's time to get to our listeners who really know what's going on. So why don't you take us into listener feedback? All right. We got some instance feedback on Instagram. Ooh. Tarika Wright says, uh, commenting on this old post because I was so excited to hear the return of Bailiff Rusty. I'm not on Team Black or Green. I'm Team Rust. Oh, my goodness gracious. I was so surprised when Rusty came back, too, to be honest with you. All right, we got some Twitter feedback. Ooh. Oh, this is about Lord of the Rings. Susan Stacy, a longtime loyal listener oh, yes. at Black Eyed Lily, said, while listening to this episode, I really appreciated Bubba's opinion on Lord of the Rings on Prime. I, too, am finding the Rings of Power magical in moments. I'm not going to compare dragons and rings. They're both such different stories, which I'm enjoying both of. Oh, wonderful to hear that, Susan Stacy. I don't mention it enough, but if you have watched Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power on Amazon Prime, please check out Double M's wonderful podcast he does with Priscilla on the Bustin' Blockbuster feed. That's Bustin' without the G, Bustin' Blockbuster's podcast feed. Double N does a great job. You'll also find it on our YouTube page. They break that down, and he and Priscilla go over some really deep Lord of the, Ring, Lord of the Rings lore that I had no idea about. So wonderful, wonderful work from them. Ooh, we have a little bit of feedback on Twitter about this episode that just aired, Catfish, episode nine. Love what it. What do people say? Uh, Endless Mike at Endless Mike 03 said, I, I miss Damon, but understood why he wasn't in it. Hmm. Rain is crashing through the palace. Didn't make much sense. Yeah, well, obviously we've seen that the dragons have a way to get out of the dragon pit other than <laughs> other than up through the floor. But she was she was upset. She had been kept hostage for a bit in her room. So that's not that's not great. Catfish, you did only go seven out of ten. Do you think if Damon had been in it, you might have liked the episode more? I mean, this is just pure setup. We're gonna we got Damon coming back next week. Oh yeah, big time. I would assume. Nicholas Fortuna at Nicholas Fortuna on Twitter said the show officially began tonight. Holy oh. smokes! Wow, I was anxious the whole episode. Ooh, so I think Nick liked it better than us. I'm really excited about that. He says I think I hit every emotion. Just and... like Laris. <laughs> And Nick writes, 
Otto Hightower might be the slimiest character in the A Song of Ice and Fire universe. Oh, wow. Lord Draggyfoot running a close second. <laughs> uh, we've talked about Otto a, li- a bit and Lara certainly a bit. Are they the slimiest characters? Is there anybody from the first show who you thought yeah. was slimier? I mean, this is come pretty. Come on, Littlefinger, come on. I know that people don't like hearing this, but I do think Otto Hightower in a lot of ways is an awful lot like Tywin Lannister. The actor read Tywin Lannister lines when he was auditioning for this, and we never saw this part of Tywin, but I certainly think when he made his decision to flip sides and have his troops sack King's Landing, and then, you know, his son stabs the Mad King in the back on the show— and then he has his daughter, Mary Robert. I really do think this is very Tywin Lannister light, like, but we just didn't see that part of Tywin Lannister's arsenal because the show is set 17 years after the fall of King's Landing. So, you know, I, I, I we're seeing the sliminess because we're here in it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Littlefinger. Oh, oh, yeah. It's to me, it's always Littlefinger, okay. and I love him for it. <laughs> All right, so we had some feedback about episode eight. Again, mm-hmm. we had Dooley's left legs. He said, Mrs. Left Leg says, thank you for the mention, guys. I'm shocked Bubba only gave it a seven. I'm so glad he loved the pig moment. Oh, no, I just realized. That means I've given two episodes in a row, seven out of ten. Ugh. Once oh, again, boy. who cares what I think, listeners? I hope you loved it way more than I did. Mm. All right, and likely Seth says, my rating was a bit high, but that's how I felt leaving the episode. Coming back to thinking about those first 10 to 15 minutes, 8.5. I think we convinced him that the first the first few minutes of the episode was a, a, a lot of, last, of uh, exposition. Of, right, of last episode week's episode. Eight, yeah. yeah, but let me say, Seth, I if you loved it, don't let us talk you down. We don't want to destroy something you love. So, yeah, I had problems with those first 10 to 15 minutes of exposition. But I hope, once again, I hope I don't influence anybody. If you love it, love it. I, I, mean, I am Team Green. That means I like influencing people. <laughs> okay. We got this great feedback from at Patman23 on Twitter. Patman writes great articles on Watchers on the Wall, the site that covers House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones. Be sure to read Patman's wonderful articles and follow Patman on Twitter at Patman23. And he gave us a great bit of feedback. He said, I really enjoyed hearing the Joffrey podcast this morning when you listened to it. He said, I'm equally fans of Bubba and Catfish, but I was pleased that Catfish eloquently made the case for R.I.P. Vayment. Justice for Vaymond. I think Vaymond was fairly well established as far as secondary characters go. They posed him as an antagonist to Damon in episode three, and his eulogy for Lena in episode seven positioned Vaymond as someone ready to challenge Lucerus's standing in the succession. So his involvement in episode eight was a natural progression of that. I don't think the show has to get me too invested in these characters personally for me to recognize that they have an impact on the story or the characters. I felt the same way about Jory Cassell in Game of Thrones, who wasn't in many scenes, but I felt his death at Jamie's hands in episode five of season one is relevant rather than some rando Stark bannerman. And But then he says that he admits Jory is not an ideal comparison because we know about Ned's regard for Jory and his crush on Sansa had for Jory in the books. Now Jory took care of Arya after his grace was ambushed by Arya's bloodthirsty monster wolf. Oh, wonderful, wonderful feedback. And once again, Patman, I I don't want you to come to my side. I'm just going to say how I felt about that. I mean, listen, in- Patman always brings the receipts. Oh, he does. You can't, you can't challenge Patman. Once again, I'm not trying to convince him. I'm just trying to say how I felt. And that I felt in season one of Game of Thrones, Jory, who did die in episode five, spoiler if you haven't seen Game of Thrones, but Jory, they did have moments of Jory, you know, by himself talking to someone and kind of saying how he felt. So there was a scene of him. I believe it got added because those first season episodes were so short. So I think they just wrote a scene of Jory talking to Jamie Lannister. They also, right before Jory died, they gave him a real human moment of staring at a beautiful woman in Littlefinger's brothel. And so you kind of connected with him on the line of, okay, he's human just like us. He sees a pretty woman and he stares at her. And so when he died a few minutes after that, to me, that's why his death his death had a bit of an emotional impact where Vayman, because I didn't really feel like we knew him too much. And we really hadn't had a scene, a one-on-one scene of Vayman talking to somebody 
before the episode where he lost half his head. And so I'm glad you felt that way. I just didn't. So. All right. And Jack Klompas at BT Mac 11 says, can't tell if Counselor Catfish is from King's Landing or from Augusta National. Augusta, Georgia is just no place to be. You know, maybe, maybe Counselor Catfish will try to do Miss Celia's accent oh, next no. week. Oh, Counselor Catfish is from across the narrow sea somewhere. Oh, my goodness, guys. <laughs> More episode eight feedback on YouTube. Someone on YouTube named Mushi wrote, your podcast is as important as the show itself. And then oh, gave us clapping. Hell yeah. Oh, wow. They wrote, I'm a bit surprised that there appear to be some questions online about the king, Viserys, actually having died. Will we see a funeral or skip past that? Hmm. So we did. I mean, we really didn't see a funeral. We saw the silent sisters preparing his body. We did have a moment of Allison who really did. Um, she was sad. So don't you think this, at the very least, shows that Allison did care about Viserys catfish? We'll get back to Moo Sheep's uh, feedback in a bit. But... She did, but uh, also uh, it's it's funny that it didn't strike me until now that of all the things we did see, the constant searching low <laughs> and lower <laughs> yeah. for Aegon, there was no big celebration. It was, uh, it was a, a rush to anoint Aegon instead of a celebration of Viserys. That is for sure. And let me tell you, that crowd at Aegon's coronation, those were polite claps at very early. You know, they didn't yes. really get into it too early. There was a silence and then golf claps and then more claps. Right. Uh, I thought for a while that they were a paid audience. Now, let me say that Mooship feels a bit different from Susan Stacy. Mooship wrote that, on the Rings of Power, Mushi says, I watch it, but I don't manage to be as attentive, and he's not feeling the stakes as much. So, Mushi, hopefully you got through the end of the first season, and there's certainly some big things at the end of the first season without any spoilers. Hope you liked it. Ooh, Catfish, we got a review of, of an older episode, episode seven from Sebastian. What did they write? All right. They said, on the topic, who's the blame for the kid fight? Oh, in this case, they meant the fight between Eamon and the other children where Eamon yeah. lost an eye. He said, uh, blame the little bees who could have asked their dad or <laughs> tell him someone stole their mother's dragon. I don't even believe in that concept because how does one steal a dragon? You you can't. And they also had no business waking him up. <laughs> okay. I mean, I appreciate the... How do I say this? The, they feel it. <laughs> Sebastian, Sebastian is stone cold. So Sebastian is feeling it. And I love when someone gets impassioned. Heck yeah. I love it. Hey, we got two new reviews on Apple Podcasts, and we are so thankful for these. These are very helpful. Definitely subscribe. Subscribe is the big thing, whether it's YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. But reviews are also wonderful. And we got a five-star review from somebody who's called Sir Dick Titus, I think is how it would be pronounced. Five stars, rebirth of a lifetime. They wrote, just as the gods are good, this canon podcast cannot be killed. Like our Lord and Savior, Sir King Prince Joffrey, uh -huh. whom is reborn and rises like a phoenix, this podcast has been reborn stronger and faster than before. Three words. Finger looking good. <laughs> yeah, that's a match game answer. Oh, thank you so much. I think that was my match game answer. I'm very proud yeah. of myself. All right. Oh, and we got a review from Grumpy Gobert. The title is Podcasting Excellence. Ooh. Two very best friends bring their encyclopedic knowledge of all things of Song of Ice and Fire to you with love, warmth, laughter, and improv. By the end oh. of your first episode, you either find yourself breathless with laughter, brimming with newfound thoughts and emotions, or curled up in a heap in the corner questioning every life decision you've made that led you to this point. Oh. Either way, Love and Cavish will be there to hold your hand and make you a proud double L. Double L? Loyal listener. Oh, my goodness. Grumpy Gobert, you are the absolute best. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now, mm -hmm. Catfish, we're going to read... An answer we got from last week's episode. All right, hey, we do have one answer from last week's match game. You ready for it, Catfish? Oh my God, I'm ready for it. Let's have it. Aggravating Amond is so aggravating 
How aggravating is he? At family dinners, he always makes sure to talk about his cryptocurrency startup. Oh, is that the worst? <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people have been to some great family dinners with terrible topics. I love that. As you know, that's from our uh, Hall of Famer for his that's answer right, this Hall week. Of Fame. It's Satan Claus at Claus Sons plural on Twitter. Thank you very much. Man, we appreciate that. It is great, Bubba. Yeah. Even though we've got 12 other shows we're podcasting about, oh, yeah. there's only one more episode. Episode of- 10, The Black Queen, obviously Ooh. titled after Rhaenyra, who leads the Blacks versus Allison's Greens. What do you want to see in it, Catfish? What do you need to see in this final episode? Since we both were only 7 out of 10 on this one, what do you, what do you need to see? What do you want to see? I need to see I need to see uh, somebody uh, go down. Ooh, I'm gonna Anybody say you want to see go down. Yeah, absolutely, Aegon, because I want it to be oh, Aemon, no. who oh, wow. I actually, interestingly, yeah, I had read something somewhere that I thought was very smart. That it seems clear that Aemon is kind of trying to pattern himself on Damon. Same uh, hairstyle for sure. Same hairstyle and just uh, the uh, being a fighter, etc. Yeah, so I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready for Amon to take over because he is not going to take no s from nobody. Oh heck, no! My name's Bubba. You can find me on Twitter to attack me for my terrible answers in the match game this week at Fit and Trim. That's F I T T E N T R I M at Fit and Trim on Twitter. And I'm a catfish. You can hit me up at C J G Man sixty seven on Twitter. And you'll hear us next week on this last episode for season one of the, the Joffrey, Joffrey Podcast. Podcast. I'm telling mother. Oh.